Hey guys, Oak Tree Bank Statement Loans. They are great for self-employed folks, people coming back into the workforce, and all those gig employees, people who have gigs and work in gigabytes. Check out Bank Statement Loans. There's over 100 million people who could use these things right now. Click this banner right over there. And we're going to talk more in a couple of seconds about some of those non-QM deals. But first off, Sandra Thompson, she's been nominated and is absolutely going to be confirmed as a permanent director of the FHFA. Now, I've avoided this story because she's been the acting director since Biden canned Trump's director, Mark Calabria. So changes that this administration has wanted to make have already happened. Now, the biggest change is really the GSE status. That's Fannie and Freddie. See, Calabria and Trump were moving to recapitalize. That means give them money and release Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac from conservatorship. And Thompson, like those two whopping cash cows, Fannie and Freddie, right where they are, in near complete government control, and paying out like a broken ATM machine to the federal government. Now, the other change is what we've seen with every other federal agency since Biden's come in, and that's a mad dash for anti-discrimination and fair housing issues, which is an interesting topic this morning because of the latest CFPB memo, and frankly, I'm kind of at a loss as to how to explain this, but I'm going to give it a shot, so bear with me. So the CFPB right now came out and is asking tech workers or fintech workers, and I think there's a bent on code writers, to root out discrimination in their company's existing and future code that they're working on. Here's the thinking. You can have code that was written with the intention to get discrimination out of actual human decision making, but that very code can have discriminatory outcomes or evildoers can find discriminatory practices for otherwise nonpartisan code and use it in a discriminatory discriminatory way because with the mortgage market retracting from the past two years of historically high originations, I just know there's a ton of lenders out there who are looking for more ways to deny loans. Right. From the CFPB, they say, and here's a quote, for example, while algorithmic mortgage underwriting is sometimes hailed as a method to significantly reduce housing discrimination, and many of those designing the algorithms seek to create a fair housing market, that's not always how things work out. In a recent study, study of over 2 million mortgage applications, researchers found discriminatory effects of these new technologies as black and Hispanic families have been more likely to be denied a mortgage compared to similarly situated white families. Okay, so that's what the CFPB said. And who is this recent study that the CFPB is referencing that proves there's discrimination in mortgage code? Well, I clicked on that on the CFPB site and discovered that it's not a study, rather an article by the Associated Press. And what was the reason for this loan denial on this borrower? And I'm not kidding on this here. The borrower stated, it seems likely it was getting rejected by an algorithm and then there was a person who could step in and decide to override it or not. She was told she didn't qualify because she was a contractor and not a full-time employee. Okay, so the study was apparently on this one person. According to the CFPB, again, they redirected me to this. Borrower said that the algorithm behind the automated underwriting was the problem. And there was no underwriter, I guess who that's the person she's talking about, didn't override the denial, which by the way, they're never going to do. And that the reason for her denial was that she was a contracted worker. Now, if I were to put on my loan officer's cap and think about this for a couple of seconds, I would say that doesn't really seem to be discrimination. The loan officer set the wrong expectation. That's a non-QM bank statement loan and not a Fannie and Freddie loan. Seriously, it's just that simple. The loan officer should have gone to Oak Tree and gotten one of those bank statements loans and then and then 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 the loan officer should go back to that lady's place of work and offer the same great loan to all the other contracted workers there but that didn't happen the denial got reported to the Associated Press the columnist who I presume I don't know but presume knows little if anything there is about automated underwriting systems wrote an article it doesn't seem to be a study as reported by the CFPB someone at the CFPB read the story and decided it was factually accurate and now the CFPB is asking code writers to root out discrimination in code and whistle blow on it so if there is discrimination in code I mean certainly we need to get rid of it it just I'm not sure if that's necessarily the case but in the spirit of whistleblowing I'll be the first to do it one factor in a loan approval or denial with any automated 
underwriting system is a borrower's credit score. We all know this. And from an article on CNBC, they say about 54% of black Americans report having no credit or poor to fair credit scores, which is considered to be anything below a 640 credit score, according to a recent survey of 5,000 United States adults by Credit Sesame. About 41% of Hispanic Americans report falling into this category as well. In contrast, 37% of white Americans report having bad or no credit, and only 18% of Asian Americans report similar credit circumstances. Therefore, the conclusion that we can draw, and this is an issue, is Fannie, Freddie, and all your HUD loans or your Jenny loans has a built-in flaw that guarantees white Americans are going to get loans more frequently than African and Hispanic Americans. The point is really irrefutable is not only does a CNBC article claim, but the United States Census Bureau's account of credit scores by ethnicity draws the same conclusions. Those credit score standards are part of DULP and every other automated underwriting system that every single lender in the country basically permanently relies on. And until we make changes there, we will always find what is perceived to be or actually is discrimination in underwriting both automated and manual. Hey guys, very interesting topic today. This is great fodder for conversation. So make sure that you're sharing this with other loan officers, real estate agents, uh, or anybody else that, you know, might want to know what's going on in the mortgage space. That said, you guys have a great day and I can't wait to see you again till tomorrow.